Hello and welcome to a new gameplay breakdown video. Today's topic featuring Warwick is about how to be an oppressive and hyperactive early game jungler in order to commence a snowball that becomes an avalanche. It's also a sort of look at when all lanes are doing well, how you should focus on taking out the enemy jungler from the game and translating your lead to your laners for that free win. Thanks to everyone who used a new community feature in order to vote for this video. As Kindra came second in voting, they will be the topic of the next gameplay video. Alright, let's begin with our breakdown. Warwick is strong, so you can do this level 1 or 2 strategy that I'm going to show you against most other junglers, but I do decide to start red buff without a leash so the enemy doesn't know exactly where I started. The reason for this is I want to go and steal Malphite's blue knowing that it will hurt his early clear, slow down his level 6 power spike, and maybe even force him into buying a hunter's potion to sustain his clears, which means he won't be able to buy a pink ward, and I can use that to my advantage. This is more risky than simply going in and taking his blue level 1, but I didn't want to face check in case it was stacked and maybe expecting an invade, as we weren't sure where they were. I make my way down after doing a red buff, but as always I'm watching the enemy laners, and I see them beginning to rotate. In this situation, don't panic. You have flash, you're fast, and you also have a tail. And now that Malphite is also rotating up, and due to Riot nerfing the plant spawn timers recently, I don't have a get out of jail free card. So I hit my W while out of vision of the Lissandra, I use my movement speed passive to run up into their tribush, and now I can simply flash out. But why would I do that? Lissandra's level 1, and Lissandra start Q in lane, Cassidy can't CC me, and neither can Malphite. My laners are also helping by rotating over. So I simply run right by Lissandra and use my Q to get to the other side of Cassidon as Anivia stuns them nicely. Now I'm free to leave while saving my flash. Having that presence of mind to know how you can get out of these situations is very important. It was weird that they did actually ward it, but it shows that they are paying attention to these things, so I also have to pay attention to them. Important to note here is that I don't have smite up for another 30 odd seconds, and I'm low in HP, so I don't want to go and take raptors which could be quite risky if Cassidon and Malphite decide to invade me. So I move over to my blue buff to 3 buff Malphite and also then I can look to gank knowing that he'll probably be on the other side of the map. And I really don't mind if Malphite goes and takes my raptors and my krugs because I'll be impacting the map and getting my team a lead. So I finish up my blue and had I bothered to see Malphite CS before I roamed into his jungle I'd notice he had done two camps prior to collapsing on his blue and the reason he took so long to get there was because he was doing his raptors. 8 CS meant his red plus his raptors. Nevertheless, Cassidon is pushing hard pre-6, a mistake, and so that's a free gank for first blood. Make sure to hold the Q in case they decide to flash, and also for that impact when you deal the final blow, which always feels really satisfying as Warwick. I help Anivia push to deny Cassidon CS, and I'm sure not to tax anything if possible. After this I rotate up to gank the top liner, which doesn't pay off, and I also see that Malphite actually did clear my Krugs and Raptors, and so fortunately, because of the gank, I have enough to go back and get my Tiamat. It's a strong early game so far. After buying, I move on down to get level 4 for my Krug, and I seek to return the favor by stealing Malphite's Raptors. I'm confident in my 1v1 ability, and I will have Flash and the plan to escape if needed. I stumble onto Malphite doing his Raptors, he's low on mana, he's low on HP, and that's just inviting Warwick to torment you. If you never make an aggressive move like this with Warwick, you are wasting his strong dueling potential and ability to be an oppressive jungler versus the enemy. Malphite wants to save his Flash because he doesn't think I have the burst to kill him underneath his tower. Uh, how wrong he is. I flash E and activate the team out and Q at the same time for a beautiful chomp and steal his raptors on my way out. Remember to click on camps as you take them so you can see what level they are. This is helpful when you are behind because then you can know how much catch up XP you're getting and also to see how many times the enemy has taken the camp. If I come back in a few minutes and the raptors were say level 7 or 8, that would mean Malphite cleared them initially at level 1 and again at level 4 and 5. But we leave one baby chicken behind there to further stifle his XP gains. After that sequence, in order to be hyperactive now and continue this oppressive style, you should be immediately looking for a gank. I rotate bot lane after doing my scuttle, and a neat little trick that I don't see people using is if your target is far away and there's an enemy between you, you can activate your E and Q through them so when your E goes off, you free them towards your team and away from where they want to go. You can now auto attack them to finish it off. It's super smooth and super easy. Before I go back I quickly clear my wolves as I want this quadrant of camps to be off the map because I'll be going topside for red afterwards. Some of you have commented on clearing and pathing and things like that. You want to make sure you're maximizing the XP and gold from your camps so clearing them on one side of the map before you move to the other and go back is very important. After clearing my raptors which have spawned for the second time after Malphite stole the level 2 camp, I take my second rotation red, hit level 6 and immediately move over to steal Malphite's blue again. 
I know we conducted a gank bot lane and lost some crucial XP. So either he's low and level 5, or he's gone back, which gives me time. This is why it's very important to use your F keys to scroll around the map or click on the map just to see what your teammates are doing when you're not in a position to help them. Maybe you're going back or walking towards a camp. You can't help them, so you might as well look around to see if any summoners are burned or what the enemy jungler is doing. I use the plant to get over the wall and over his blue buff, and as I land, I'm looking for any clues to his location, and boom, I see a wall placement. I pull the blue buff out, hit the plant to give me vision of the situation, and despite a terrible smite, I secure it, and then immediately go to ult the Malphite. As I know he saved his flash earlier when I found him at his raptors, I get ready to follow through with my Q and go with him as he does it. My anticipation of his predictable behavior pays off, and he's shut down again. He then claims that I can play Warwick with no hands, which is funny because he's playing Malphite. My top and mid are beautiful and have begun to rotate in case I need any assistance leaving, but of course I didn't. And now I can steal Malphite's topside camps and basically guarantee my power in any skirmish. Now that you've used this oppressive nature, you want to make sure you can translate this experience and gold lead to the rest of the map so that your dominance in this game will help your team become dominant. Remember from the first Warg 1v9 video, it's not just about you, it's about getting your laners ahead too and keeping an objective lead. I go back, buy, and mirror my birds pathing back to bot lane. Why? Well, if the enemy bot knows Bard has gone back, they would normally expect him to return through the lane or by himself. However, I have roomed down with him, and as Thresh is clearing a ward, we secure a free kill on him. That early gank really helped my bot lane gain a lead and they are definitely capitalizing on it, which is the best thing as a jungler. I know it's not always going to happen like that, but when you are fed, even if they had thrown that lead, you could make an impact. From here, I clear the tribush pink, use the plant and solo the mountain dragon. I see Malphite ganking bot lane, and I suppose I could rotate over to help, but I know my bot has this under control, and that I'll move over as soon as I'm done with this winged lizard. As such, Malphite is so far behind, he can't get anything going, and so I use my Warwick passive to wait until he has gone back to base so I can guarantee a 3v2 dive. A lot of Warwicks might go really ham here and try and ult them off it from behind, but Thresh can flay you out, he can hook you, and it can really swing the game. Just be patient, use your W as vision, see them off I go back, and now you can make a play. Thresh checks the bush, I don't react, I just use my W for a speed boost without using any spells, and the threat of my ult forces Varus and Thresh to split up. Ash suits a bullseye ultimate, I chain CC with mine, and we clean up Thresh, and throw down that disrespect dance, which looks a little funny on Warwick, to be honest. <laughs> and if he has pinged, and thanks to my earlier place pink ward, we see Cassidy floating on down. I try to use my E to fear him away from the bird, but he uses flash and beats it, but we're still able to secure the kill on Cassidy and the first tower from this play anyway. Remember, in most MMRs, say below even D5, people will always look to greed some kind of play when they are behind. Even if it gives them a net loss on golden towers, they'll feel better because they managed to get something even though, overall, we actually extended our lead. This doesn't really help them win the game, of course, but just be prepared for this. Be prepared for any ham plays from the enemy. And don't be mad if you're the bard, it's all good. We get mid and bot tower from his ridiculous roam. Now, as most people seem to be learning, bot laners shouldn't just AFK push bot lane if they're ahead, but perhaps move around the map and help secure easy objectives. In this case, I have finished my Titanic Hydra. I have a huge lead, so rushing this is a smart choice. We take the Herald, I move top lane afterwards, chain CC the Cassidy to prevent him escaping with his ult, and take a free top lane tower, while warding the enemy jungle as we leave, in addition to taking more camps to deny further gold and catch up XP to the Malphite. Remember, if you're taking towers and the enemies push back and you're leaving to go back to your own base, clear any camps you can, further deny them gold and experience, and don't let them get that bonus catch up experience. I've moved to the bottom side of the map now as the next Drake has spawned, and my team has huge control of the entire map overall. But remember to keep up the pressure, don't go from your own jungle to get the camps that are still standing. Take the enemy's camps, keep getting towers, because you don't want one of those crazy plays they try to make pay off and maybe they get a Baron or something. Cho gets himself a feast stack on the Drake after we take it, and the enemy is chasing an Anivia, Bard, and Ash on the top lane, which isn't really that intelligent, but I told you they get desperate to make plays and will force something to try and get gold. This lets Cho'Gath and myself push bot lane and get a few dents even onto the inhibitor tower. It forces Lissandra to rotate down to defend it. I steal the red buff, Choga steals their Krugs, and I'm about to go back, but I see how low Cassidy is, and given that I'm Warwick, it seems like a super easy rotation to the top. My movement speed is going to be insane. And so I'll begin my sprint to the top lane to help my team out, and perhaps we can collapse on them and steal something more. And this is where I will have my I regret my decision moment, sponsored by 
Well, no one. And it's a mechanical misplay, and this is because I am blinded by the thirst of a triple kill. And instead of just ulting and killing the Varus as soon as possible, and knowing that I will have the movement speed to catch up the Kassadin, I try and flash through the Kassadin so I can chomp him and then ult the Varus. Sadly for me, Kassadin has just enough mana for one more R as I fear him. No matter, I can blindly ult the bush and I'll hit him, right? Uh, yeah. There you go. How to carry but also look really stupid on Morik. Nevertheless, I'm able to get the kills and assists, along with a nice double kill on the Sandra, and then a triple kill on the Malphite, and then the Bard Quadra Denial on the Thresh. Best teammate. When you're so far ahead, you can still get a triple kill out of that situation, you know you have a good lead. These mechanical misplays will happen, you just have to be careful not to let them happen when the game is in the balance, because if you make this mistake like I did at the top lane, you get too thirsty for triple kill, you can have the enemy make a game swinging play that can actually let them win the game overall. Nevertheless, from this fight, we're able to secure an inhib, I take Malphite's Raptors on the way out to add insult to injury, and I return to base with over 3000 gold. It's not ideal to stay out for that long, and I did want to go back originally when I stole the red buff, but if it's 100% within the flow of the game, and you manage to exponentially grow your lead from that, then it's obviously okay. Just be careful not to try and end the game because you haven't reset the gold levels. They have spent their gold, and you haven't spent yours, so even if you have a 3k lead, that's great, but if you have 3k in your pocket, you effectively don't have that lead. So, after going back to base and buying and spending all that gold, we move over to the Baron area, to perhaps make a play there, and I see that the enemy team is kind of coalesced around their blue buff, and I force a fight, even though I miss my ult again because I'm just spamming buttons to try and get multi-kills, we are able to still kill them, and I'm okay showing this because I had such a good early game, but good grief, I always forget that my ult is in smart cast and my mouse isn't connected directly to my eyes. Anyway, the whole team is really far ahead, and from these few kills we can easily push to end. Using a super hyperactive early game to shut down the enemy jungler and exhaust ganking pressure where he cannot is the easiest way to win in solo queue. As long as you continuously focus objectives and be there for your team to swing fights in your favor, even if you miss everything, you will rack up way more kills and more gold than the enemy can contend with, making it very easy to win. Having your impact translate to lanes is the most important piece of information in this video. If all lanes are winning, go find the enemy jungler and remove him from the game so your laners can play freely without that pressure. I hope you were able to learn a little something from this game, and I look forward to showing you Kindred next. Please like, comment, and share if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more jungle guides coming soon. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.